and then. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first episode of Vote to Kick, where we talk about things in the uh, gaming industry and whether we should or should not keep them. And then we get to hear from you and your opinions on the matter. I am your host, Jim, also known as Malthanus. With me is my fellow host of the Talking Script podcast, Arlie. Yay! Robin. I, t <laughs> I can't call you by your real name. I really just can't. And That's fine. Today, we are talking about loot boxes. So, primarily, uh, I'm going to be, as the host, I'm going to be discussing pros for a given subject. And mm. our, <laughs> my host, my fellow guest, is going to be talking about the cons. And I believe this might be, uh, you know, as a, a gracious host, I think I will allow my guest to go first on a oh. rate for, for the setup of the show. So, okay. Arlie, uh, what are the cons of loot boxes? Do you want me to list out everything or just do like one thing and then you can comment on it? <laughs> uh, let's let's go with a little back and forth there. I like that. So okay. you go first, you throw out a point. All right. Um, the first negative about loot boxes is like it's not it's not player um, it's not pro player off the bat. Let's try to find out. It's not advantageous to the player because, like, you buy a, a game, you know, ostensibly you buy a game and you get everything that's in the game. But with loot boxes, not only do you not get everything that's in the game, but you have to like RNG your way to getting things, which is is or isn't gambling, depending on how you look at it. People are debating that. It's so. taking a risk. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. I suppose the comment that that's that's you know a fairly solid point. It's one I never really thought about. Um, <laughs> one of the primary, uh, so I suppose that would go to me. I really don't have a, a comment on that because that's that's a fairly solid thing to start with. There's there's really no debating <laughs> that point. Sorry. Um, no, no, it's good to come out strong on discussions like this. Uh, the I suppose one of the strongest things, and this is. Um, I remember a discussion that was had a while ago on another uh, YouTube or another podcast where uh, people were talking about the business model of Knights of uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic. Um, from a business standpoint, loot boxes are a solid stream of revenue, mm -hmm. and uh, it's something that can keep going. They can just keep adding more to loot boxes or add different kinds of loot boxes, and it's it's almost a a guaranteed bit of revenue. Yep. Um, that's true, and kind of the point that goes into that is the whole idea about how the cost of a game, on average, hasn't gone up. The production costs of games has gone up. Um, and so, because people don't want to pay more for games, they're augmenting their stuff. But the counter to that is, is that you look at any of the major studios year over year, their profits have been increasing. So although their production costs are going up, they're making more money. So like, it seems to be more to me that they're lining their pockets more than, you know, investing back in their games. Okay. My uh, opinion. No, that's, that's fair. Um, now the... We do have a question from chat. We'll have to figure mm -hmm. out a interesting way, a better way to fit that in there. But um, from simply underscore Deo, what about games that take more money to create nowadays, whereas old games are okay? So basically, the same point you were just saying yeah. is that uh, now games have to live past their release. Mm -hmm. So that actually, I think, is more pro in favor of loot boxes because again, you can add more content as things go down the line. Yeah. And it's it's an easy way to inject new things into the game. My my counter with that is that I don't know that games necessarily have to live beyond their release more. Um, I feel like that's more of um, game companies are finding that by doing that, they can keep putting in stuff and getting more more money out of people instead of having to make whole new games to get more money out of people. Um, I mean, unless you're talking about MMOs or those kind of games, like persistent games, um, like your single player games and all that, I don't, 
they are doing more as game as service, but I don't necessarily think that they have to do that. I think it's a choice because they think it's another way to get revenue. Okay. Um, I believe that would be, you know, since that was a point from chat, I think it's it's your turn for another con. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. So, like, back in the whole idea of the is it gambling or not, whether, you know, strictly legally it's gambling or not, it does tap into that part of people of, like, ooh, am I going to get something good? You know, that, that anxiousness and fun and it can lead people to perhaps spend more money than they otherwise would if they were just trying to get or just buying a thing um so that can be a real negative especially when you get into like the addiction issues and stuff like that staying within your boundaries see i'm having trouble here uh, <laughs> because i'm not terribly for the continued use of loot boxes outside of incredibly restricted mm -hmm. situations, just for the simple fact that I kind of agree that they are kind of anti-consumer in the first place. So I, I have to admit, I'm, I struggle to be the <laughs> pro on this particular argument. Um, and, and all of the points for me just kind of fail in comparison because... <laughs> the, the only the only real pro I've been finding to loot boxes is if you look at things from a corporate perspective, because, mm -hmm. you know, you talk about the addiction issues with loot boxes. Um, somebody hooked on buying things is, is kind of marketing 101. You kind of want that to happen. Yeah. Um, so that's... Uh, the gambling aspect of it is is something that casinos have been tapping into as marketing for however long casinos and places of gambling yep. have existed. Yeah. So. Especially, like, casinos go really out, like, they don't even have clocks anywhere, so you can't tell the passage of time or how much, you know, they, like, they, they really bring dial the food it up. to you. Yeah. Free actually, drinks as long as you're gambling, you know. Actually, that's, that that's, that's the other thing with uh, the the pro they don't uh game companies don't have to spend money on that because you're already in the comfort of your own home or yeah. on <laughs> say your phone on the subway or something it's like you don't it's really true. have to do anything extra for that extra two or three taps to get you know that mm -hmm. loot box or that extra energy for i don't know if you're playing harry potter mystery or whatever it is <laughs> um I don't know. This is this is difficult for me. <laughs> like, I, I I thought, oh yeah, we'll talk about loot boxes for the first episode of Vote to Kick. It's a real softball, and then I realized I have to argue pro. Yeah. And uh, everything I say comes with a but. Um. Okay, another one from. Do we know if loot boxes and their software is the same as video gambling devices that are collecting information on you? Just because it has the ability to doesn't mean that they are doing it. Well, um, that is something that has actually been recorded, Mr. Deo, in chat. Uh, companies will change the prices of in-app purchases based on your spending habits. So they will increase the price of something or decrease the price of something based on how much you buy. Uh, trending more towards increasing the price until you are willing, like until they find your upper limit mm -hmm. and then dropping it back down or continually giving you better and better incentives to buy until you do buy, and then they slowly try and train you up with yes. value. Yeah, like, you, you refine it, like, three ninety nine, but what about four fifty, and then 5 I realize now I'm arguing for the con side. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. I can't... <laughs> I can't... I can't do it. Like, this... The, oh. I, I spent a large portion of the day while I was working on the... I was remoted into my computer from work. I was setting up the frames while in between mm -hmm. running builds for the program I'm working on at, jo at my job. And um, all I could really think of is it's a guaranteed revenue stream for all mm -hmm. of the reasons that it's terrible for me as a gamer. Yeah. Well, about the collecting data, um, I think in the loot box area, it's data on a large scale as opposed to individuals. So, like, they won't they're not looking at 
people individually and trying to get the individual to spend more. It's more they're looking at the group Trends. and how yeah. they can maximize the most out of that group. Um, right. It's it's definitely on a macro scale, which is why games try to be as accessible as possible mm -hmm. so that they can get as many people playing as possible. Yeah. It's also why um, in the mobile realm, so many... Uh, so many mobile games have like pop-up things that in games where you're clicking a lot so it's really easy to get you to accidentally click the thing to buy it and you know thankfully they're not amazon and they don't have single click purchases yes yes <laughs> so uh um that depends uh they're not but that's the thing though deo is is they're not looking at your spending habits as an individual they're looking at your spending habits as part of a whole so they're trying to get gambling on a macro level like mm -hmm. casinos work against an individual against uh well i'm not gonna lie they they, ba <laughs> they basically want you to spend as much money as possible so yes they are working against you uh, mm -hmm. game companies are working against populations yeah. in this kind of arena so it's it's still gambling on a macro scale it's mm -hmm. something that we did not have available before the internet yeah so it's it's one of those things where it's yeah you can't cash out but you are still it is the concept of perception of value. Yeah. Uh, well, one, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, well, one of the arguments people make also is that in gambling, you can lose. So, like, you go to a slot machine, put in your quarter, and you could get nothing back. That's, like, the heart of what gambling is. And a lot of people say that loot boxes, although they tap into a lot of the same impulses, are not technically gambling because you always get something. It may not be what you want, but it's something. I have always experienced that whenever somebody says it is not technically something, <laughs> that it is a very rules lawyery kind of response. Um, that is true. You always get something out of a loot box with some kind of value. Um, however... That's that's the thing is uh, with gambling. I th I think this is the primary thing is with gambling. You are working. You are trying to get money, which has a globally accepted value because mm -hmm. economics. Yeah. Um, if you can't cash out, it means that value is something that is it's subjective. Yeah, and it's and only in that game that it It's really only matters. in that system, yeah. yeah. Um, and and Deo also brings up a point in chat that a lot of companies offer free ways to get loot boxes. Yeah, um, like first one's free. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you when you level in Overwatch, for example, you get a loot box. Well, when you play during their big events, you get more loot boxes. Um, you get uh, Black Lion Key Drops. Mm -hmm. randomly in guild wars 2 or if you make a key farmer you do your level 10 quest you get a key um it's one of those things where there are all there are ways to do it so you you can get free stuff mm -hmm. but it is slow and yeah. savage you also bring up a good point that if nobody ever wins anything good from loot boxes players would just stop buying them so there has to be some level of value which also opens up uh, another particular issue uh, that has been in electronic games mm -hmm. uh, for a long time slot machines um, for example casinos are permitted to have a controller in a slot in a, an electronic machine that counts the number of plays and will lock you out of a win mm -hmm. until a certain number of plays have happened. As yep. long as they reach a certain ratio of plays to wins, it is legal. Yep. Which means that 
and again, I'm now almost wholly arguing on the con side <laughs> with, uh, Good job. Th those are for mechanical things. Those are harder to update on a regular mm -hmm. basis with mobile games, with, uh, always acts with, with always on internet stuff. Um, updates are frequent and they can continually talk to their server and be like, oh, this person is playing less and less. Next time they do a thing, give them great stuff. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is and that I, this was just something I was thinking about randomly. Um, when you are gambling in, like, say, a casino and you win, you are actually taking something away from the casino. Like, they're still going to always end up on the upside and win, but you're still taking money out of what they could otherwise have. When you win in loot boxes, you're not really, like, there is no actual, like, transaction thing. Like, the company still has everything they had plus your money. <laughs> right. Uh, I suppose that would be kind of one of those things where if you went to a restaurant and you said, I would like this thing off of the menu, and you actually have a chance to get the first five things on the menu. Uh-huh. And uh, if they bring you one of the other four things, uh, you still get your food, right? Mm-hmm. And you knew going into it that, you know, you might not get the food. You only had a 20% chance of getting the dish you wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how that would be acceptable in a physical realm. Wow, I just complete just change this side red. Just, <laughs> just, just We should have flipped for this one. <laughs> Would you be able to stay pro for loot boxes very long? Uh, I don't know. Because my only right. my my only problem is is we're seeing a lot of the most heinous versions of loot boxes coming out of these companies that you're talking about that are basically lining their pockets. Yeah. Well, the other thing is is like I I admit like I like loot box in those systems more than I should because it's fun. Like, I tell people all the time, I don't play Hearthstone, but I log in every time they give out free packs because I just really like opening the packs. So, like, I totally get that drive and the fun aspect. But, like, that's honestly part of the reason why I don't play Hearthstone because I knew if I do did play it all the time, I would be buying packs like there were hotcakes because, like I said, it's fun. So... And they like, they did a great job of, like, recreating the feeling of, like, opening a real pack in life and pulling out, like, the, there's a whole shimmer thing and there's music. I, I know. I was, I was, I've been, I have had a key since the beta. Um, yeah. I stopped playing once I realized that if I didn't pay money for packs or play for, like, four hours a day, I wasn't going to get anywhere. Yeah. Um, and now I'm just so far behind that it would be nigh impossible for me to get anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh... So let's see here. From Savage, if nobody ever wins anything, okay. Uh, the only thing you can really take away from the game company is the prospect of buying more loot boxes because you got what you wanted mm -hmm. until they cram hundreds of things you can win. So you want to keep playing and get more goodies. Uh, that is uh, better represented, and that is even further represented by rotating rewards, much like Guild Wars yep. 2 has, where they give you a limited window of time to take a chance yeah, because then you have the pressure of like, oh my god, I gotta get it, I gotta get it. So you're more likely to buy more than you would otherwise if you had an unlimited amount of time. Right. So it's just it just feels more and more like this is just coming down to psychological manipulation. It is. It is. Yeah. Wow. I, I was I was, yes. I was I was trying like all day. I was like, yeah, I could argue the pros of loot boxes it's it's fun it's it's guaranteed money for the devs to keep making more stuff for the game and then i realized that everything else weighing against it is just yeah i mean i don't personally i don't feel like loot box should not be a thing i'm, I'm fine with them existing and being a thing but there needs to be very tight controls on what's in there um like the worst things i think i've said before the worst things are when companies put power items power things that 
substantially make your character better than other people's characters. So not in looks, but in ability. Right, so a specific um, example would be EA with Battlefront 2 recently with their, their power-up cards in the loot boxes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. That, oh my god, that was terrible. Like, doing that is not okay. Because, like, everybody bought the game, everybody should be able to progress by the time they put into it, not how many extra things that they buy randomly. Um, that you're just making it, I, just, I hate the term, but pay to win, essentially, because the people who spend the extra money will essentially always be more powerful. And Deo does bring up a good point in chat, is unboxing videos are really popular. Um, I one don't of the... get it, but yeah. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah and it's it's a societal thing um Dea's right those videos like uh i opened 600 boxes in overwatch you know there are people that are, like i think aaron uh guild wars monk if you haven't mm -hmm. bothered him on twitter or on twitch um in preparation of path of fire no heart of thorns launching he did a month of hardcore silver wastes farming and oh, wow. saved all of the bags oh yeah i remember that yeah so that was uh it was like two thousand bags or something uh, he, like he had a lot of bags yeah. i think he had to buy extra Crazy. bag space for them no mm -hmm. no he had a personal guild that he had to upgrade um. <laughs> to, he had to upgrade the guild bank in order to store more of them um let's see here I think I like the system talked about in some past talking script where you can open loot boxes for a chance to get something fancy or some fancy item early and then it goes on sale in the store later. So lots of people might buy a few keys for the chance to get the item cheaply while others will just wait to buy it anyway. Yeah. That, I, it's one of those things where I think on this past talking script when we talked about the new mount licenses mm -hmm. for Guild Wars 2 that um, the, the quality of the skins has increased. Yes. So, uh, for those of you who are watching either on YouTube or in Twitch who are not familiar with Guild Wars 2, the mounts that they have, they have skins, it's one of the primary cosmetics for uh, mm -hmm. the game. Um, the mount licenses, you pay 400 gems, which is roughly $5 for a mount license, which gives you a random skin out of a small subset. Uh, it is loot box E, but you cannot ever get a duplicate. So there is a cap to the amount of money that you will ever spend if you want one specific amount. Mm -hmm. However, they introduced, because of people complaining about it, they introduced a 1,200 gem, so roughly $15, uh, license that lets you pick a mount. Um, yep. And I don't mean to be overly critical of the artists at ArenaNet, but the initial run of mount skins, a large portion of those were not worth fifteen dollars mm. some of them were simply here are more die channels because again for those who don't play guild wars 2 you can unlock permanently die colors for your armor and gliders and mounts and the default mounts only have one color channel that you can alter a large portion of the first run of mounts were just here is the base mount with some slight changes and four die channels yep so it was a a simple reskin for those of you who play League of Legends. It was basically chromas. Um, the newer ones are almost all entirely model and slight animation tweaks or particle effects. All incredibly well done and getting to the point where they're worth it. So this concept of you get a premium, like you, you technically get a, a large discount, but you have to deal with RNG versus paying at a premium, but guaranteeing what you want. Yeah. And then you just have to wait. So you have to sit aside and you have to sit on that money or you have to take the risk to maybe get it. I think that's that's probably one of the best case scenarios. Now, generally speaking, mm -hmm. a lot of new loot boxes have been putting in currencies where if you keep buying the loot boxes, you get a specific currency that lets you buy stuff that was in the loot box. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the same thing, but you still have to be paying into the loot box system in order to access it instead of paying straight currency for it yeah the there's um currency. there's something else like uh well when you were saying currency you're saying a, a different currency than for anything else like right power. it is a like a token or something it is different from the cash shop currency that you would yeah. otherwise use to buy things 
Yeah. Okay. Um, that a lot of games are doing that, um, are integrating that with duplicate protection. So, like, if you get duplicates, um, instead of actually getting the duplicate, because you often can't have more than one of whatever the thing is, um, they'll give you the currency instead, which is a good idea. Okay, so I think that is uh, probably close to time on that, because we're at about mm -hmm. 25 minutes for the recording. Yep. So let me go ahead and grab the poll. I completely lost my link for it. I had <laughs> it up, but... So, I have been invited to open this form. I need the link. Get link. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab that link. We're going to throw this in chat. And now we throw it to you, our friends in the audience. Mm -hmm. Just threw a link in chat. Go ahead, hop in, fill out your vote. We'll be showing the results of the poll live on next week's Vote to Kick. And yeah. uh, hop on our Twitter, at Mad Realms, two A's in the Mad. Uh, let us know what you think about loot boxes. Let us know how you would change them if you would change them, or if you'd rather just see them removed from the very existence of the gaming industry, <laughs> to put it in Deo's words from the poll. And uh, that has been it for our inaugural episode of Vote to Kick. Normally we'd be showing the uh, the results here in the, the, the center wheel for mm -hmm. the previous one, but we had no previous poll. So we'll get to that next week. I hope you all have a fantastic evening. This again has been Vote to Kick. I have been your host, Malthanus. You can find me on Twitter at MalthanusMMO. My co-host, Robin, Arlie. Yay. You can be found where? Uh, at Arlie82 on Twitch and Twitter. Oh, curses. Okay. You don't have permission to view it. Deo, I need your help. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Falling apart already. Wait. I, 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 fall, yep, 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 yep. This is, this is going. I don't have the permalink. Ah, abort. 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 <laughs> oh, I'm providing a pre-filled version. Well, then I failed already. <laughs> Oops. Oh wait, wait, wait. I think I got. I think I got the right one. I think that's the right one. Okay. Growing pains, folks. Try Growing that pains. one. Let's see if it works. <laughs> if that one works, let me know. Um. Make a straw poll. Well, we're <laughs> we're going for fancy. I don't know. Uh, that Deo just threw... Deo's been percolating this idea for this show for a while, so I, he, he was going with a bunch of this. Um, however, I hope to see you all next week for episode two, where we'll see the results of the poll. And uh, I hope everybody has a fantastic evening. Good night, everybody. Bye. And here we have the credits. Normally there'd be music here, but I'm just improvising. Yeah. Ooh. Gonna let the credits roll a second time. Because we're just vamping for time. Doop -a -doop. And we're just gonna finish after they stop. <laughs> doop, 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 doop. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. I kind of sounded like the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all. <laughs> I know, I forgot to add chat, Dale. I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. We'll, we'll we'll do some retweeting, but thank you all for watching. Yay!